town of Semonkong lies high in the mountains of the kingdom of Lesotho, where winters are bitter cold, and in some years, the snow doesn't even melt in summer. The vast majority of Lesotho's 2.1 million people live in the lowlands, facing South Africa, near the capital, Maseru. Semonkong lies 100 kilometers away in the mountains, not a great distance, but it takes five hours and a 4x4 to get here. There are no tarmac roads or mains water and electricity. The area's only real resource is its beauty and the grazing that it provides for the livestock kept by its inhabitants. Currently the biggest economic venture here is probably the Semonkong Lodge, which employs 30 people and is run by a South African. The lodge was started in the 60s. It started as a camping site for a tracking company. Um, and they used to stop here and camp and then do some fishing and go and see the waterfall. Um, and then it was sold to Fraser's, which was a big trading company. And they ran it for a while. And then we got here and we got a management contact with Fraser's. And we've been running it since 1990. And since then we've bought Fraser's out. And it is my wife and I who now own and manage the lodge. Eh? But there are only a few hundred tourists who make it out here every year to explore the mountains on horseback and get away from city life. Total tourism revenues to the town are just $250,000 a year. Too heavy. <laughs> no. No, no. Actually, I don't think most people know about a place like this, and that's probably the problem, but it's gorgeous. I mean, I've traveled to lots of places in South America and in Central America, and Simon Kong is, is beautiful. The country is beautiful. Um, you know, it's, it's a tough place to live, but the people are, are very friendly. And, and despite the poverty and stuff, the cleanliness. I mean, people take, take care of the area. It's, it's very nice. Delphi Sincerely works for Lesotho's Tourism Development Corporation. As one would uh, imagine, it's a, a remote place. And uh, being remote has got its challenges uh, in, in, in terms of our economic development. It's always very, easy, very difficult to take services to places like those. Uh, but uh, having said that, I, I have to say the Lesotho government has shown its intention uh, to try and bring services closer to uh, Somongong. That's why it was declared as a town. And there are plans uh, to uh, improve on access and other services that will make life uh, uh, better in Somongong, but also uh, that will help Lesotho to capitalize on the uniqueness of uh, uh, the place that Somongong is. With so few tourists, many here still rely on their animals to make a living. <laughs> 68-year-old Mororua Mohlodisi has loved horses for as long as he can remember, and in a place as horse-crazy as this, it's a lucrative passion. He trains racehorses, which run once a month just outside the town. The jockey is his youngest son. It helps me to get lots of money. When I came to Samong Kong, I got involved in horse racing. I've been doing it from a young age and I've succeeded. I've won a lot of races from Masero to Lirebe and even here, horses are very important. You see all this livestock? I bought it with money made from horse racing. All these houses were built with horse racing money. I've educated my children who are now married. All of this was possible because of horse racing. I don't think I can survive without it. I don't think I will ever quit this. It is in my blood. Even my young son, I encourage him to not give up on this. On race days, an air of excitement hangs over the whole town as residents ride their horses to the field where the races are held. It's an attraction for tourists too, most of whom don't ride in the actual races but come out to watch. Tata never misses a race. Before they start, he sings a praise song for his horse to protect it from injury and help it win. It 
The men place their last bets. <laughs> then they're off, racing on rough terrain, uneven and dusty, a far cry from most urban race courses. Jockey wins the first race, worth a $120 cash prize. My name is Mpoisa Mpoisa, and I am happy because my horse has won. The money that I won here today is going to help me feed my family. My wife will be happy. My whole family will also be happy. They will know that this horse is their life. It brings in an income. There are no professional jockeys here. Almost all the riders are children, the sons of horse owners and trainers. Marua's son didn't win today, but his main income now isn't racing anymore, but the animals he bought with his winnings especially his valuable Angora goats, which are sought after for the very soft mohair wool that they produce. It's an important industry for the whole country. Lesotho produces about 750,000 kilos of mohair a year, but it's less lucrative than it once was. The price of mohair has dropped a lot. We farmers should be making a lot more. I don't know, maybe we're being ripped off, but I think it's not just about how many goats you have, it's also about the quality of their hair. You have to keep them very clean, and the male goat that you breed from has to be of good quality so that you can get even better money. He still generates some employment here, hiring local hands to help him whenever it's shearing time. But most of the town's informal businesses are linked in some way to tourism. Itumeleng Rapotsana left her family behind in her home village to come and earn some money in Semongkong. She started up a bread baking business with other women, and now their main customer is the lodge. I started working at the bus stop with another woman, making and selling this local bread. The owners of the lodge used to see us there, and they asked us if we could supply the lodge with the bread on daily basis. It's been the main source of income for all our families. Another group of locals offers visitors the experience of abseiling down the gorge, where sub-Saharan Africa's highest single waterfall, the Melatsunyane, plunges into the river below. It's another attraction to lure visitors here, and today it's also a lifesaver. This angora goat, so precious to its owner, has been stuck on the cliff for days without food and water. So when it was rescued, there was no shortage of spectators. I wish we could all do this sport. It's important. Yes, it's true that it's frightening. But we should all do it, so that when tourists come here, we can show them and they won't get bored. But it'll be worth watching. Many locals hope that the attractions here, the spectacular landscape, the races, even the abseiling, will lure more people. But water, electricity, good roads, and thousands more visitors might change this landscape irretrievably. The trick will be finding the balance so that Semong Kong gets its place on the tourist map without losing its soul.